Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am your host, Joshua Meekins. Um, today, unfortunately, I'm here without my amazing co-host, Amira Smith. She is somewhere with her toes in the sand relaxing, and I'm happy for her. You know, everybody needs a mental health break. Um, but I will be doing today's show myself with our amazing guest, Camille Smith, who I will introduce in a minute. But first, we have some announcements for you guys. We're going to start off the show with some announcements. Um, first, we are actually shortening our show length. It was at one point an hour, an hour and some change, but we wanted to make it, you know, more easily digestible for our audience. So we shortened it down to about 30 minutes. Um, we'll also have some exclusive content, you know, a longer conversation for our audience if they want to partake and put that on our Patreon page. So Mike J Films, if you did not know, has a Patreon page. We have about four patrons holding us down strong um, who've really helped us over the years. For people who don't know, that money actually has helped us get, you know, studio time, uh, work with a lot of uh, fees that we've had that goes into the, you know, the podcast, Old Head the Series, all the a bunch of other production stuff that we're doing. So, you know, on that Patreon, you'll get exclusive content. You'll get actually script access. You'll get to see what we're doing behind the scenes, you know, some of our upcoming projects and stuff like that. So please, if you do support us, you really want to see more of what we're doing, please make sure you subscribe to that Patreon. Right now, we're going to try to do episodes of Disruptors about bi-weekly, you know, release them bi-weekly starting again in December because we're currently in November. But we want to give you guys some, you know, more Disruptors, some more culture creators, some content creators, and just people really shifting up the game. But, you know, it takes a little bit more to do that than we initially thought, but Again, if you can, subscribe to the Patreon page. It'll be in the bio of our Instagram. But um, without further ado, I would like to introduce you all to our, our guest for today. She is um, a fantastic person. I had to, I told her before, I had to humble myself in order to talk to her and make sure that she could uh, be on the show today. <laughs> but um, we have the fantastic Camille Smith. For those of you who don't know, she has a fantastic story. She, in, in her own words and with a little bit of convincing, she is a content creator, um, engineer on the side. That's where we're going to put that into the atmosphere. <laughs> um, but she's a content creator that creates content about being a woman, a black woman at that, strong black woman in engineering. Period. Period. Um, her, her, you could say your hair journey as well goes mm -hmm. into that. Um, some beauty, some styling, some traveling. You know, she's a, 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 an all-encompassing <laughs> And woman out here creating content and you know we love to see it i know she was a little bit shy about starting her her journey with that but with some convincing and a little bit of a stern talking to she decided to, <laughs> to, to make the jump and we and we love to see it but um you know i, I just want to start off camille how we start off every episode i want you to tell the people who you are and what you do well hello that was a great introduction i really appreciate that um but my name is camille smith as joshua just said um, I am currently mainly an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated from Villanova University with a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering, minors in Biochemical Engineering and Ethics, and I do like to add those because my mental health mm. was in shambles during college. Absolutely. Um, I was also a pre-med student as well. Um, <laughs> so uh, I did that, I graduated in 2020, and now I start, or I worked at a uh, pharmaceutical company as a scientist now, um, but I do content create, which has been I just hit my one year anniversary, which wow, is kind of that's cool. that's a major deal. Yeah. A lot of people don't get, you know, when they start off, they quit. They start yeah. off, they quit. You've been at it for a year now. Yeah, that's October twenty second, okay. I believe. Um, I actually changed my Instagram name. So shout out to people that followed me before I changed it. Mm -hmm. Right now it's I am Camille Smith on all my socials, but gotcha. before it was Camille underscore Kathleen. Ooh. Um, so I changed that. How to get that. rid of the whole name, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I changed that because um, I. Around October of 2020, I wanted to just be more intentional about my social media footprint. Mm. Um, and I didn't exactly know what that meant at the time, yeah. but I just kind of started creating content. And now, again, it's kind of unfolding more and more in front of me. I've started actually working with brands that I actually wow. really enjoy um, and I use on a regular basis, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, now it's actually potentially going to be a source of income for me, wow. which, again, in the beginning, I would not have thought. Um, but yeah, I create content. I love to travel. You will always see me. I feel like I told one of my friends, you will never know what season it is if you follow <laughs> my page <laughs> because I'm always going to fly somewhere that's warm. It yeah. might be the dead of winter. Like I live in Philadelphia, of course, yeah. but it might be the dead of winter, but I'm going to catch a flight to Miami and you'll see me wow. in my, ba my bathing suit pictures. You'll never know what season it that is. That sounds like the life of luxury, <laughs> just traveling to Miami when you want to. Okay, yeah, that's, that's where I aspire to be at this yeah, point in my life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I aspire to do that. So Camille, tell us how this even started. So like, 
one becoming a content creator is a tough thing as itself but you know being a black woman in engineering is, is no small feat i th- feel like you know you've actually shed a lot of light on that you know you i think you've coming from somebody who knows you and the content you've created at this point like you've really built a community for black women in engineering you know how did how, first of all how was your journey in that and then how did that start like how did you how did you notice something that that needed to be found well my journey itself was very difficult um i think Anytime that anyone asks me about advice as it relates to engineering, I'm always going to be the first one to say, like, it was the most difficult thing that I've done to date. Mm. Um, And I don't think that we should necessarily shy away from the fact that we fail things. I think one of my favorite pieces of content, and this is kind of what, like, this was a pivotal point for me when I started actually making engineering content. Mm. Um, I made a video about failing a class. And... It took a lot out of me to make the content. It was a video. Um, And so many people, like my classmates were like, oh my goodness, like we had no idea you had failed this class. Like you didn't tell anyone, da da da. And I like a lot of engineering students, STEM students in general. And I think just students as a whole, um, you know, if you do well in high school, you kind of expect yourself to get A's in college. Like that's like a very normal, you know, way of thinking. Um, So I had kind of an unhealthy relationship with my grades, you know, Mm -hmm. getting A's is, you know, my general worth. Um, so when I failed that class and I, you know, made this video about it, I was like, wow, like so many people rarely talk about their failures Yeah. and there's so many people that don't look like me in my field. I, of course, my dad will make fun of me. Like I chose the one field that is purely white male domina- dominated, excuse mm-hmm. me. Um, so I went through engineering. I didn't have anyone that looked like me. I didn't have a single person of color as a professor at my university. Yeah. Um, so then I kind of looked at my you know, content was like, all right, I want to be intentional about it. And it kind of left me where like, I think representation is so incredibly important. And I think it's kind of become a little bit of a buzzword. Um, It's a positive buzzword in my opinion, but my purpose and what I stand on and when I talk to brands, when I talk to people is I want to be the representation that I didn't have, Um, especially as a black woman. And even today, like I met another black woman and she was like, oh my gosh, I've never met another black, you know, engineer chemical engineer mind you and i was like well here i am (laughs) you know like here i am we exist um so you know that's engineering was hard Mm. um but nova engineering is like i heard stories i got a lot of those but we don't got time for that um but i do air out my traumas on tiktok if you would like to follow me (laughs) on there okay so was the video your start of content creating like was that like your pivotal point when you said you know what People want to hear more about this or like what what kind of shifted that that narrative, that storytelling narrative for you? So weird. I had multiple. So the beginning of quarantine. So I was imagine I was a senior in college, March 2020, where it's all sent home. Yeah. Um, I still have to finish my classes. I'm still taking legitimately difficult classes because I failed that class. Actually, I had, you know, a full curriculum. Um, but then during that summer, you know, you have like the the murder of George Floyd and the murder of Breonna Taylor and I was just so incredibly just raw and I even thinking about it now like it gives me chills because I was just in such like a terrible emotional space at that point so I started making actually the preliminary part of my current podcast the being black pod and I was making IGTV series and I had the being black pod and I basically talked about being black in various spaces so that was kind of the first you know content that people were like oh like keep making videos keep making stuff keep making this content then I made the, uh, hey, I failed a class content, you know, yeah. in engineering. Um, and I naturally always talk about skincare and hair care. But because I'm an engineer, I also liked the actual science behind that stuff, too. So I had multiple, I'll say, pivotal points. Yeah. And I think the sum of those have gotten me to where I am currently. Okay. So how would you define, like, I don't want to just call you a content creator. I just want to call you an engineer. But wh- how would you define what that what that is for you? As cliche as it sounds, I think I actively choose to be myself every day on the internet, Mm. which is really hard. Um, Because, you know, with the internet, people can be so mean. You know, people can be very detached from, you know, what they say, what they comment, and things of that nature. But every day, I actively try to be myself. And whether that looks like being stressed at work, you know, I'm an engineer, I've been working all these. the past four years to be able to get to this point, but sometimes going to work sucks. Okay. And I want people to acknowledge and see in my content that like, yes, like it took me a long time to get here. And like, yes, I'm happy with what I'm doing, 
but sometimes like it's not all roses yeah. so being myself you know being okay with how i feel talking about you know being sad sometimes yeah. uh, earlier we talked about being an adult you know like i want people to experience my content and feel a place for them within like the little community that like i'm starting to create so okay that's like the goal yeah no that's that's dope and i think um even that being your journey like a lot of times it's hard for people to like you everybody has a passion right mm -hmm. you have a passion not, and the crazy thing is like it's it, i feel like this conversation is full circle because one of the first times i talked to you mm -hmm. uh, you were asking me about like you know what is content creation like i see you do all this stuff i see you make all this stuff like josh what the heck is going on <laughs> I was like, well, you know, y you kind of find, uh, I guess, your narrative, the, th the things you want to talk about, and you mm -hmm. create content in that manner. And I remember having the conversation with you talking about, like, how I don't want to call myself a content creator. Like, I, I, don't, I don't do that. Like, that's such a cliche thing. Like, I have a podcast, but I don't want to, you know, talk <laughs> about my podcast. Like, how did, how, did, how did that change start for you? How did you start embracing that role? Uh, I think, honestly, it was kind of forced on me because my friends also acknowledged that weird i'll say like gap in like confidence that i had because yeah. that's really what it is um and everyone just kept calling me a content creator yeah like just like you like <laughs> but you I, didn't like the, the term I, I didn't like it initially yeah. it, it wasn't even that i didn't like content creating i just felt that i was not i wouldn't even say worthy because that that that's not exactly how i want to articulate it but i just didn't feel what i was doing i looked at it as like fun Mm -hmm. But I think something that I learned, you know, as I've continued to do it is like I am creating content. It doesn't necessarily have to be the perfect quote unquote content that I perceive other people's creating, like other people on Instagram creating or TikTok or Twitter or whatever yeah. podcasts. Um, when I came across your podcast, I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, like this is like so put together. You know, they have like a whole production team. They have all these things. They have all these resources. Like who am I to, you know, call myself the same thing that they can call themselves? Yeah. Um but content creating is literally so much more than that. Um, it's really, really difficult because I definitely was one of those people that was like, oh, I could be an influencer. I love taking photos. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, have whole, I have two jobs. <laughs> I literally have two full-time jobs. It's hard out here, right? Oh it's hard gosh. out here. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a function of not liking, you know, the term. It was just I don't think I necessarily felt completely confident calling myself that. Yeah. Um, but I had to realize that all content isn't perfect and mm -hmm. me wanting to be – vulnerable on the internet me wanting to be myself on the internet is yeah. literally the exact type of content that i wanted to create in the first place absolutely and that, that, that's so crazy because like we uh, we talk i think this is like a re reoccurring theme at this point with people that we talk about is like creative confidence mm. you know you really have to have a, just a moment when you're like i can do this like f it i'm gonna make this happen you right. know what i'm saying so it 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 it, it plagues us all all creators <laughs> it plagues all of us like i i, I struggle with sometimes with this podcast too I talk about that like yeah you want everything to be so perfect but in your own right your mistakes makes what you are or not mistakes but your the things that you bring to it make your flaws so unique to your content right so i, I think that um that, that's important to talk about but you know i like to get in let me let me delve into your story a little bit pick some things <laughs> apart saw some things you know did my research like right. i always do right um i heard that you have uh engineering gala I do. coming up you know that's that's incredible first and foremost Thank tell you. the people about it you know this might this episode might not air till december when's the gala it's december 11th december 11th it's gonna be okay right what you gotta say about the gala tell us about it um so first and foremost so one of my really close friends now i actually met through the internet mm -hmm. which again is kind of odd for me internet friends love that friends i love them um india Irvin Choi. she yeah. came to me in june and Prior to that, like, she was kind of the person that, like, any, like, crazy idea or outlandish idea, like, yeah. we would just be like, okay, cool, how are we going to make it happen? So she is, or her birthday is December 16th, I believe, and she was like, hey, like, I want to do something, like, different for my birthday. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, cool, and she ends up coming up with this idea. Um, prior to this, I had never, you know, planned a gala, planned a fundraiser, yeah. or anything of that nature, but yeah. basically the purpose of it is to raise scholarships for black engineering students. Yeah. Um, and that like hits home for me because college is really expensive. Um, I benefited a lot from, you know, random scholarships that people would, you know, give me or random grants that people would give me throughout undergrad. Yeah. Um, so to be able to potentially help other black engineering students, like not worry about money as much and actually just focus on like the difficult curriculum yeah. um, would be super cool. So we're going to have a gala. It's going to be uh, 
of course for the fundraiser but also it's going to be like her little birthday thing we okay, have like a cake okay. and every that like everything like that um but yeah so december 11th we're selling tickets currently um we also have like a crowdfunding goal of five thousand dollars and we're and how can people participate in that so if you go on my socials i am camille smith literally everywhere on instagram pinterest tiktok and twitter yeah. um in the link in my bio there is a means of actually it's so bad link yeah. in my, no i'm just bio. laughing every link in my bio you'll see um, it you'll find it there's a means of actually donating um even if you can't come we have set up we've partnered with um i'll say a travel company for lack of a better word that yeah. if people want to come from out of town we do have a lot mm-hmm. of engineers that are coming from out of town to get them discounted hotel tickets Love that. or hotel um rooms so yeah i'm really excited about it it nice. makes me super anxious because i've never done it before okay. but i've already been talking about how this is gonna be the first annual so i'm really hoping. love first <laughs> annual you gotta, so you gotta speak the reoccurring into existence that we're gonna keep doing it every year that's fantastic um to even have the first of a gala, I feel like people get so to even be that far, Camille. Like, think about it. You started this what? You started for real content creating a year ago, not even. Yeah. A year ago. That's in, that's incredible. And to have like a gala already set up and lined up. You did mention like being able to con like connect yourself with other people through Instagram. How's right. that experience been? Like, have people been reaching out to you? Like. Do yeah. they love your content? You got people in the background like, let me just like this, you know, because she fine, or do I got to like this because <laughs> the content, like, what is what has that experience been for you? Um, it's been super cool. I think I'm very blessed because when I initially made the transition to content creating, you know, changed my, you know, handle, Yeah. people that were already following me were super supportive of what I was trying to do. Um, when people that I didn't know, you know, started to follow my content for, like, my, whether, whether it was engineering, beauty, whatever it was, yeah. um, I'm like super responsive to my DMs. So like India, for instance, she saw my uh, me post about my podcast and she commented and then DM me and was like, hey, I want to be on the podcast. Cool. Yeah. We now have traveled to four places in the past wow. like five months. Yeah. And that's now a she's travel like, buddy. You gained a travel buddy. Yes, through. I did. Wow, yes, I did. Um, so that's been super cool. And like even I, th- I think my journey with Instagram in particular has been much better than like other socials i'm trying to yeah. expand into those social spaces and feel more comfortable you know utilizing them to connect with people yeah. um but people have just been so incredibly supportive my love language is words of affirmation mm-hmm. and people have really just been pouring into me and i think that's what's been propelling me to you know move forward take risks you know plan yeah. a gala um come on podcasts like this you know i literally would watch the episodes on youtube yeah. and now i'm gonna watch myself on um, YouTube, yeah, which is kind of crazy. Are you? Is this your first podcast experience of someone else? Yeah, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that, yeah. I'm I'm very happy to you know, <laughs> have you here as your first experience. We have uh, a, a history of having great podcast alum. I wanted to say that on the podcast. Right, I know I was saying right, it before. But yeah, right. some great podcast alum. If you haven't seen it, check out our other episodes because our alumni are fantastic. But um. I'm happy to have you here as, you know, to be your first podcast. That really does mean a lot. You know, you, mm. you trusted us with your platform first. Because yes. I know this is the first of many. Hopefully. You know, this is absolutely the first of many. You, I, from what I can see, you have a, a really huge, fantastic journey coming your way. But, you know. That's the goal. I can't blow your head up too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> My head's too nah, big. <laughs> it's, the, it's the words of affirmation. So I want to get back to one of the things that we had talked about, creating a space for black women in engineering mm-hmm. and what that, that kind of really looks like and feels like and being something that you were looking for at that point. Um, where do you see yourself? Do you feel like you're firmly planted in that or do you feel like you're constantly learning about other people and their experiences or is it just a unified share ex- shared experience? I'm sorry, microphone. <laughs> Definitely just beat you up. Um, it's odd because I literally tweeted this the other day. It's so weird how common – our experiences are yeah but i think at least for black women that i've come in contact with like we're so spread out like throughout the states throughout the world that mm-hmm. we're you know the one the two in a predominantly white program yeah, yeah, yeah um so it's still so isolating it's so interesting that it's literally such a common experience but it's we're experiencing it by ourselves um so you know what i've been trying to do is a encourage people to use the internet because i didn't do that um (laughs) literally after i graduated you know this is when i found the entire black women in stem black women engineering community that i've you know have and that i'm you know continuing to build um but i think i will always be firm in my standing as a black woman in engineering because everyone's experience within this field 
and as like of course like a person is going to be valid so i think every person that i've met so far has shared similar experiences unfortunately but yeah. we've shared similar experiences um so i just hope to encourage people to continue their journeys if they're still an undergrad and to foster a community for them after they graduate so they okay. have people to lean back on so science okay beauty right have you ever thought about starting your own cosmetic line? Because remember, Joshua, I'm listening, listen, 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 listen. I'm throwing back to initial conversations you had about content creation when you right. said, "Hey, listen, I also wanted to go to, I want to be a dermatologist." Ah, you, remember that? You telling the world? Wow. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I know you had talked about it, and there's very few and far between black dermatologists. Right. And you be dropping hints and and, and 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 products to buy on your pages. Right. So like, what's up? Yeah, no, that is still very much the goal. Okay. Um, I currently am at least in my head, have like a fast track to hopefully med school. I wow. hopefully want to... Speak into existence. We want more doctors, more <sighs> whatever you want to be. <laughs> right. I, I do hope to start med school in 2024. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm working currently because unfortunately money is very important. Um, and I'm going to be saving up as much as I can prior to going back to school or hopefully going back to school. Well, yeah. no, going back to school. Going back to school. Um, I do want to continue to... Or not continue. I do want to be a dermatologist. Yeah. That is definitely the plan. Love it. Um, I'm I have eczema, so I've yeah. always gone to the dermatologist. It's always been super important to me. Skincare in general has always been super important. Mm. Um, and, and she, wait, just so y'all know, she breaks down like her skin care routine, yeah. her hair routine, all that stuff on social media. Right. So please, if you if you need some tips, some pointers, what to put on what, make sure you follow her. Please, <laughs> please, please. please. I think it's important though because I feel like, like for from an engineering side. All everything is science, yeah. like absolutely everything is science, and I don't think I recognize that until after I graduated. I didn't even realize that, or I didn't think about how engineers actually were formulating the majority of beauty or cosmetic products. Yeah. Um. So, I do think eventually, you know, when I become a dermatologist, I'll be able to combine my engineering background with hopefully a skincare line. That's the goal. I don't know what it'll be called, um, but I want it to be easy to understand. So that people can actually participate. I feel like the beauty industry actively tries to make itself complicated so people will only fall to victim to marketing. Yeah. But the science behind it is super important, the actual ingredients, what they're supposed to do, the actual formulations of it. And it's important because us black people have melanin right. in our skin. It's a little right. bit different, a little bit different. Right, 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 right. So I, I, think that's, I think that's incredibly important. I know we are running low on our time for this episode, and Camille, you've been fantastic. But I got a quick, you know, we do this or that okay. at the end of our shows. Okay. So. I got a couple questions for you. Hit me. Um, and I want to see what you think. Ready? Go. Remember, this. you only can choose one. I don't want you out here saying, I can do both, you okay. know, if it's every other week. Okay. You ready? Okay. Uh, Sunday brunch or Sunday cleaning? Brunch. Brunch. Okay, okay. Always. Netflix or YouTube? Mm, Netflix. Net okay, oh, okay, okay. Instagram or TikTok? You I'm, <laughs> I would choose Instagram though. All right, would you? Yeah. This whole entire day you've been on would, TikTok scrolling. Yeah, but I feel like <laughs> I I'm better at creating content on Instagram. I'm still trying to figure TikTok out. You know, I, my yeah. one video went viral, and now I'm just confused oh, yeah, she went about viral. what I'm supposed to do. You was on TikTok, did your dance, went viral with it? Mm -mm. <laughs> no, I didn't do a dance. I was talking about my traumas again, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, a day in the lab or a day of content creating? Hmm also hard i'll say a day in the lab okay a day in the lab i got i got this is this one it's i, I thought was pretty clever but you okay. probably gonna be like it's so easy ready okay all expense paid travel for a year or to a million dollars cash mm. i'm gonna say two million dollars cash okay you're not you, and the travel list that you no, are. No, because I be real, I be real smart about traveling. Like I don't need. I actually went on my first all inclusive trip, and I wasn't wowed by the all inclusive aspect of it. Yeah, right, yeah. Because I felt like I. But needed I mean, to if you could, everything. you could travel every single day all year and have it all paid for. But I could do. I I feel like I would get not bored, but like I need to have spurts of traveling and come yeah, back home, yeah. and spurts of traveling and come back home. Okay. 
So yeah. I thought that one would trip you up for sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's not what I expected, but I'll take Keep it. Keep you on your toes. All right, Camille. So I know you've been shouting yourself out a little bit, but this is your time. I want you to tell people, you know, where they can contact you at, where they can find your content, what's going on, and how that stuff is. So anything you got to say, let the people know. Camera is right there. All right. Well, hello. Um, please follow me on I am Camille Smith. Again, that's literally every single social that I have um, on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter and pinterest i'm on pinterest now too love that um but yeah things to look forward to in december i'm going to be doing 12 days of beauty content um so that's going to entail posting on instagram tiktok and pinterest and my youtube channel i'm going to revive my youtube channel i decided love that um so i got her podcast she ain't going she ain't said that yet oh my goodness i do have a podcast uh my podcast is the being black pod you can find us on instagram um and apple podcast google podcast and spotify um, and basically, I just talk about being black in various spaces. So um, Joshua was on there. So go listen to that, Being Black in Media. I believe that was season three, episode four. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I just know. I, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm very happy to be here. And I hope that if you guys do decide to join my little community, you'll be happy to be there too. Yeah, she's an amazing follow. I can definitely say from personal experience, seeing the growth has been incredible. I'm very proud of all the things that you've done Thank and the you. things that you are still going to do. And I really hope that you, you know, set your footprint in the, the field that you're working on for real. Thank so you. it means a lot. It probably means a lot to the people that you're affecting, you know, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> but uh, again, I appreciate everybody for tuning in to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. Camille, you have been fantastic. Um, we are, you know, again, if you, you will see exclusive content, you know, pictures, things like that of the episode on our Patreon page. We're releasing bi-weekly and we're shortening our episodes. So please, you know, if you want to see more of us, go to that Patreon page, subscribe, show us some support, show us some love. Um, and again, we will see you on the next episode. Peace.